Welcome to the City Council meeting for April 18th, 2011. I'd ask everyone to stand and join me in singing O Canada. Thank you to the National Film Board of Canada for those images of our country and thank you to Mr. David Bray for the musical rendition. So we'll start tonight's council meeting with the adoption of the previous council meeting minutes. If I could have a motion to receive those set of minutes. Councillor Wong. Thank you very much Mayor Gibbon. I move that the City Council meeting minutes held April 4th, 2011 be adopted. Thank you very much Councillor Wong. Did anyone notice any errors or omissions in that set of minutes? Seeing none I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Uh, Councillor Crokin, would you take the adoption of the agenda? Yes, I'd like to move the council adopt the agenda as presented. Thank you very much. Were there any additions or deletions to the agenda? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Oops. Thank you. And that motion does carry. Uh, now we come to the delegation portion of our meeting where any community member is welcome to come and address council on any issue. We did have notice of uh, one delegation that wanted to come forward, uh, Mr. Wald, the president of our QP local union. Uh, if you'd like to come and join council at the table. And I wonder if somebody from administration could grab the microphone for Mr. Wald. He set it down there previously. It's just down in front of the desk here. Or somebody from council. <laughs> Thanks. He's not just another pretty face. Yeah, thanks, <laughs> thanks very much, Councillor Monroe. Uh, Mr. Mr. Wald, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mayor, Mayor Given. Uh, City Administration. At this time, I would like to introduce myself. I'm Randy Wald, the President of the Canadian Union of Public Employees, Local 787. I'm here today on behalf of our local to talk to you about April 28th. The International Day of Mourning for workers killed or injured on the job. The Day of Mourning is now recognized in countries worldwide. Workers and others across Canada and the world now mark the day with remembrance ceremonies and also to make aware that all workplaces need to be safe and healthy and the most important part of this day is not to forget the workers who have lost their lives in the workplace. Over thousands thousand Canadian workers are dying every year. In Canada alone, four workers die each day. The number of people killed at work each year in Canada has risen for the past 15 years. According to the latest report from the Association of Workers' Compensation Boards of Canada, 1,055 people lost their lives at work. That's four people every workday, dead because their workplace was unsafe. Four people every day will, will never come home again, dead because their employer failed to ensure they were safe at work. In addition to these workers killed at work, there are many others where the death goes unreported if they die of a disease unrecognizable as occupational disease. <clears throat> Currently at this, at this time, QP Local 787 members want to recognize and thank the City of Grand Prairie for their diligence in having a strong health and safety policy along with having joint health and safety committees throughout the organization. So we want to thank you for that. 
very much. In 2010, 136 Alberta workers died from workplace injury or disease, leaving behind family and friends. This number and rate of workplace fatalities in Alberta, even from accidents, is unacceptably high. We failed to make, pro we failed to make progress in reducing the number and the rate of workplace deaths. We have some of the best health and safety laws in Canada, yet the number of workers in, that though workers that lose their lives continue to increase. This is the reason April 28th is set aside to remember workers who, are, who have been killed or injured in the workplace. So in closing, Local 787 respectfully requests the following. April 28th, 20, 2011, be proclaimed as National Day of Mourning by the City of Grand Prairie. Flags at city-owned buildings be flown at half mass on Alberta 28th, I should say April 28th. Encourage all employees to observe a minute of silence on April 28th and also allow the local to distribute black ribbons to all City of Grand Prairie employees. And finally, also with the City Council's approval of the above day of mourning requests, CUPE Local 787 wishes to hold a flag raising ceremony at City Hall starting at 10.45 a.m. Thank you. Thanks very much, Mr. Wald. Um, happy to see you here uh, again this year. We appreciate it. And uh, were there any questions for the delegation, comments? Uh, Councillor Gustafson. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. Uh, thank you for all your, all your hard work uh, looking after the... Uh... Thank you. My question is, how many uh, members in uh, our local 787? Uh, currently, we, we are a local... The city itself, we have about... 150, but our local, our actual local is about 130, I should say 300. We have a number of sub-locals that we also have as members. Um, we have a small work, work group out in the MDS Spirit River, 133. We have about seven, eight members out there. Are also the transit workers or the bus drivers that work for Cardinal Coach Lines is also our members. And, um, and also the Aquaterra employees are also our members. Too. So we average around 300 members, but city, actually city outside workers, I'm gonna have, I'm, I'm really 150, so. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Gustin. Councillor Wong. Thank you very much, Mayor Gibbon. So Randy, I just wanted to say that um, it's nice to see you out here and uh, again, uh, promoting national, the National Day of Mourning. I think that too many times people think of unions as just promoting wages and benefits for the employees and, and very few people actually think that it's uh, for the safety of the workers and making sure that they, they're under um, decent and proper working conditions. So uh, we, we can't stress that enough that uh, National Day of Mourning is such a good time to reflect upon that, you know, the, the safety of our workers. Thanks. Thank you. And like I said earlier, I just, as a, as a city, we want to, like I say, the local wants to thank you again for your very strong health and safety policy we have in place, and we do really very much thank you for that. So, okay. thanks very much. Uh, thanks very much, Mr. Walden. We'll yeah. deal with uh, delegation business towards the end of our agenda tonight. Um, did you, did you want to share with the? Uh, just we just have the QP uh, day morning flag. Right there. Do you want to just take a? Usually, I have an assistant here, but. <laughs> 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 Where is he at? All righty. Well, Mr. Walt, would you, yeah, I was just going to say, would you like to bring that up to the front and we can do a little bit of a photo op? Oh, you probably will be the Thanks again, Randy. We certainly do appreciate the relationship that we have with our local. <coughs> Uh, so, this is still a delegation portion of the agenda and an opportunity for anybody in the community that wanted to come forward and address council on any issue. This would be the opportunity to come forward. I see there's some 
folks there that would like to come up and please join us at the microphone and introduce yourself. Hello. <laughs> That's okay. I can, I, can do it. I can do it on my own. It's all good. My name is Michelle Cardino and I'm a long-standing member of Grand Prairie and the concern that I have, and I do have a, a synopsis of my pre presentation just in case I forget anything and something that you can ponder on later. Um, it's concerning the crosswalk along 102nd Street and 110th Avenue. So I've actually lived in Grand Prairie for many years. I'm not going to say exactly how many, but let's just say over 35. <laughs> and um, this area has always been a sore spot. The um, crosswalk that I am referring to is the side crosswalk, and it actually parallels the field um, for the Avondale Harry Belfour field there. There is a small crosswalk in that area, right? Now, about five years ago, and I did put it on there, actually, point number one there, is uh, five years ago I went and I partitioned the city of um, Grand Prairie, and I talked to Colin Fernowski at the time. Um, along with a video and a letter that I submitted with regards to some of the concerns that I have with that particular area. The road is not wide enough to have two parked cars on that side, as, um, along with buses, the size of the bus, and traffic going to and from that area. So they did look into it at the time, and they found that, you know, technically that road um, was not big enough to house all of this um, traffic. The main concern I had at the time was the fact that there was parking, right, parking along that side, and children, small children, and yes, they should go to the crosswalk, were parking in between, or were walking in between the parked cars, right? Approximately 13 years ago, I believe it's about 13 years ago, there was a child killed at this exact crosswalk, right? How this got started and, and what I saw is, I think it was last Wednesday or uh, maybe two Wednesdays ago, I almost saw a little boy, I would say approximately seven or eight years old, came within inches of being killed, right? This is an ongoing issue. It's been going on for a very long time. And this crosswalk uh, um, either needs to have um, adequate signage. There is signage on the um, road. I, I, I partitioned to have signage on the, I guess, the south side of that crosswalk. And they did put signage. There is no signage on the other side of the crosswalk of this street. Um, and according to Dan Zegler, who's the traffic engineer for the city, so I did talk to him as well, right? And of course the enforcement services, so I have been in contact with Ryan Hoffman as well. He had said that there's only a five meter, there's only five meters from the crosswalk to where a parked car is. If it is a small car, you can potentially see a small child. Keep in mind that this is an elementary, there are two elementary schools that are attached to this field. If you um, have a big truck or any truck with a camper or a motorhome, you cannot see a child in a five meter radius on either side, right? I put my son there and it was a point of problems with the street area, point number three. My seven year old son who is 105 centimeters, if he is standing at that crosswalk and there is a vehicle there and I am going southbound, you cannot physically see him, right? And at seven years old, to be able to walk, you stop quickly, and then you proceed through that intersection, right? And if he happened to be running, right, there's no way that a bus or a larger vehicle would be able to stop in time, right? So the safety is, is a serious issue at this stage. Um, I asked about how much it would cost to have, you know, the traffic, pedestrian traffic lights. And according, accordingly, it's approximately $250,000 for traffic light, to be able to have a pedestrian traffic light in there. But then my question to council, I guess, is how much is a child's life worth? Is $250,000 worth the cost of a life? Because it's coming that way and we've already lost one. Right? So I understand that if one crosswalk has to um, have one of these, then all of them do. So then my question to council is maybe that should be implemented into your plan in the future and that every crosswalk that is attached or around a school have a pedestrian crosswalk with lights for the safety of our children. Oh, I guess I have one more, sorry. I have one more thing to add to this. Um, 
This goes along the same one as the corner of 102nd and 110th Avenue. I'm sure that you guys have had a little bit of passion with this as well. And this goes with the planters that have been put forth there. That is along the same area there and it's the same problem. If you are turning in and you are going on to 110th Avenue and you are going down 110th Avenue, if you are in the turning lane there and you are right there and there is a child at the crosswalk there and they are going eastbound this way and there was a car going straight because you can't, you cannot physically in that straight lane see a small child when my car is parked ready to turn. And I encourage and the engineers of the city of Grand Prairie to check that out as well. Right? Because it is only a matter of time because you cannot see with those partitions there as well. Okay, thanks very much, Ms. Okay. Cardino. Um, can you just help me out? I, I'm, I'm wondering maybe if other council members, in terms of the crosswalk that you're talking about, mm -hmm. is it the one that actually goes in and out of the field? Yes. I'm having a hard time picturing it. So really, in between the two schools? Yes. Midway, midway no, down, no, 110th. No, no, no. The facts. Okay. Well, that's, I'm also looking at the yeah. maps. So, so just... Okay. And it's been there, it's been there, we figure for at least 40 years. Okay, yeah. so so where is it that you're talking about? You're talking about on 110th. Uh, well, there are two on 110th. The one that I am talking about, um, the, talking the about major th one that I'm talking about is the one that is going... Um, the right's a block and a half. Yeah, it's about a block and a half in okay. along 110th Okay, so it's not at a corner. Avenue. It's not at it's a not corner, at it's a in the middle. Okay, no. good. I just want to make sure that I was understanding exactly what you were talking about. Yeah. I think every, the way that I see every other council member looking at their computers, trying to you know do the Google Maps, yeah. Um, I'm clear on it now, and I think everybody else is. Okay. Um, so, was there anything else that you wanted to present to council? Because we're going to open for a round of questions if there wasn't. Nope. Huh? I think it has. And it does have it all on here, the synopsis, if there is something that I've missed. Okay. Okay. Great. I see uh, Councillor Rice. Uh, okay. Even assuming uh, that council would adopt your suggestion as a goal, it would take years. So do you have any interim su suggestions? I, you know, I heard one in terms of making no parking nine meters back, yes. uh, reducing the speed limit uh, in that area. Yep. Uh, anything else? Um, no, I think that would help in the reduction of speed is a major factor in this case because by the time you see the child, um, if you can at least reduce it to 30 kilometers an hour, it would be um, better. The, having s all of the buses on there is a concern. It always has been a concern of mine because they are a bigger vehicle and it takes longer to stop. Um, 50 kilometers, you can't, you'd never be able to make it for a child in that area. And this is, this is a county school, right? And so buses, there are more buses on this area and turning out onto 102nd than any other area in the city. Okay, uh, there's a Counties lineup of questions, so Councillor McLean. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor Given. Michelle, a question I have is, mm -hmm. I know some other areas, and I'll just go an example I used for is Grand Cash, uh, like just for school zones, is it like yellow on the signs for all of them for that crosswalk, for just that area, or is it just plain white crosswalk? Like, white. Yeah, because I know some other areas have changed that color specifically for that intent. And I think like some of these issues, like the nine meter and changing some of the signs could be a good real start on this. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, the city builds new schools and some of these ones, Montrose, or this one here is 50 years, one of these schools been there. I think it's celebrated mm -hmm. last year, 50 years. Right. So, I mean, eventually, like Councillor Rice said, we'd have to be a program in this, look at mm -hmm. it down the road and how it's all gonna evolve. But any maybe previous new schools, let's make sure that this is happening and some sign changes. I think we could do something different to sign mm. as well. Well, I think the nine meters is critical, right? The nine meters and the basically till sun up to sun down 30 kilometers um, all the way around the perimeter would greatly help. Okay, I see Councillor Crokin. Thanks, uh, very good. Uh, safety of our children, of course, is uh, everybody's uh, priority. Um, kids, grandkids, we all have them. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, I'm glad you're here with that. Uh, just a couple of quick questions. Mm -hmm. um, does the RCMP come in and do any kind of uh, education like in the gym with kids on safe crossing? Um, that I'm not actually sure. They do have a safe, I think it's safe schools program. That okay. They do do, right? that, that probably lead into my next one. Does the school have crossing guards? No. 
They used to. They used that to. might be one past. thing that they, they should really look at. I, think. I, don't, I don't know exactly why they have stopped that. Yeah. And I, I don't know, maybe it has to do with the mentality of the children as well, because, I mean, you're looking at a maximum of age of 12. You know, potentially maybe that could be one reason. The other one could be resources of the parents, because now there aren't as many um, parents that are willing to volunteer at this time. We have two working parents, so they're not able to do that at this time. Yeah. Right? So that's probably a potential another reason. Yeah, that, that's why I just think if they could bring that, if they could bring that up at school and be very repetitious about it, because it, you, don't, you can only make one mistake when you hit a bumper on one of those big buses or a car. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Coken. Councillor Gustafson. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. That was basically my question. Have you asked to talk to the schools? Have you shown them the video about almost losing well, a life? Well, I had actually a runaround with uh, um, this was back probably in 2005. It was probably Harry Belfort. It didn't go over very well. I think at the time it was uh, Alderman Given that I actually had to contact to get things rolling um, because enough was enough. And I did actually supply. I still have the video. It probably doesn't look much different. It probably looks busier at this time. Um, so. Um, it wasn't well received until I had to move things forward, and here we are again, same issue, right? Just a little farther down the road. Thank you. Yeah. Councillor Wong. Thank you very much, Mayor Gibbon. So, Michelle, we spoke last week on the phone yes. regarding this issue, and just to let you know, I didn't forget about you. I passed that information on to the city manager okay. because it, we, we were trying to decide whether or not it's a public works issue or a protective services issue. Um, can you tell me whether or not... Um, I can see there's no parking signs right around the uh, the crosswalk. Do vehicles infringe on that no parking zone? Oh, for sure they do, yeah. 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 But even still, so I believe Ryan, because um, I did mention that I was moving this forward, so Ryan Hoffman did do a little bit of work. I wasn't able to get a hold of him because I believe he was in the training today and tomorrow. Um, but something happened, um, and one of the vehicles is moved, right? However, um, a truck at five meters, you still can't see a small child when you are, you know, traveling um, eastbound. Right? You cannot see a child at, at this particular centimeter that I have displayed, because that's my son. Mm -hmm. um, you cannot see him. I was going to take a picture, but if, if need be, I can still do that. Okay, and what were your suggestions for the other side of the street? It looks well, like there's a lot of residential housing there. Well, there is, but I mean, I mean, unfortunately for people that are living in residential areas with schools, this is what has to happen. The safety of our children. So if they have to, you know, park down the road, then they have to park down the road, right? I think nine meters is not uh, unmanageable, nor is it um, unjustifiable for to be able to see a child. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Councillor O'Toole. Your microphone didn't come on there, Councillor O'Toole. Your microphone didn't come on there, Councillor O'Toole. Oh, there we go. Thank you very much for coming in. Uh, I know that neighborhood is very uh, home to me. Uh, there is uh, uh, hours of operation from about 7.30 in the morning when the buses start showing up, correct? And in this time of the year when the snow is gone, we also have baseball and soccer in those fields too. Mm -hmm. So it's after hours presence as well. Oh, yes. right. And with that, there's also people bringing vehicles and parking and there's campers and stuff like that as well just because they've got it so it is something that uh, <coughs> I do understand the issues that are arised um, on the other end of that sidewalk on 100 and the 111th they've got uh, it continues right to 112 yeah. so it goes through two separate blocks yeah. mm -hmm. uh, have they done anything over there have they put uh, a little orange man or something up there Mm, no, they do put an orange man on 108th. I believe there is one orange man <laughs> yeah. on 108th, I believe, there. And what they have done is I think the school has taken the initiative and taken pylons and even um, because people park there anyway, um, put pylons from the crosswalk to the no parking sign so that somebody won't physically run over a pylon. A little right. ridiculous, but I think that's something that they have to do at this stage. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. Thanks very much. Councillor McLean. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. Michelle, I, I was actually thought this was the crosswalk 
directly, you can say south of that, where it's just before an intersection where you turn left, and it, where the other school, like that's the open field on 108. Because mm. I find that one terrible. That and, is terrible. And there is well. no lighting. Because yeah. when I first moved to town, I lived right at this crosswalk, mm -hmm. rented a basement suite, oh, the okay. one you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And uh, I do believe it's a very important issue. And how do we go about down the road of lighting some of these intersections up for the children a little bit better? And maybe some new, maybe some things we can start up first, signs and keep. Because the one on the 108th I found, vehicles, parents waiting for the kids to come out, they're right to the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. There's no uh, five meters. They're a lot closer than that. <laughs> and so um, I think it's a very important thing. And how it would be colored on the road to say, you go in here, you can get fined. So I think it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you know what? I don't see anybody else in the queue. Um, thanks very much for coming tonight and presenting. Uh, we appreciate it. Uh, we'll deal with the delegation business towards the end of the agenda, and any motions coming out of your presentation tonight will be dealt with there. Great. Thank okay. you. Thanks very much for coming, Chuck. Okay, so this is still the opportunity for anybody in the community to come and address council on any community issue. And I'll call a, a couple more times to see if there's anybody that wanted to come forward to address council. And it looks like there isn't, so we'll move on with our agenda. We have no public hearings tonight and no unfinished business, but we do have a report, and I'll ask um, our manager of intergovernmental services, director of intergovernmental <laughs> services. I was so close, I almost had the title right. Jeanette. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we are putting forward a recommendation to council to cancel certain council and committee meetings um, as a result of council members being out of town for the Federation of Canadian Municipalities Conference. So we are looking at cancellation of the council meeting of May 30th, public works committee meeting May 31st, general government services committee meeting June 1st, environment committee meeting June 6th, protective services committee and Community Development Committee meetings on June the 7th. Okay, thanks very much, Jeanette. Um, are there any motions or follow-up coming from this? I see Councillor Rice in the queue. I'm prepared to uh, move that we cancel those uh, six meetings. Do you want me to repeat them? Uh, I think maybe just the, the meetings as listed, I think, would be appropriate. Date the meetings, the six meetings as listed. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Rice. So we have the motion. Uh, I'll look for any discussion or debate, questions or comments on the motion. Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Uh, and that takes us on into committee business, and I believe the first item of committee business was a public works committee, and Councillor Wong, I think that one was yours? Yeah. Yes, thank you very much, Mayor Given. I move that Council receive the minutes of the public works committee meeting held April 5th, 2011. Thank you very much, Councillor Wong. Did anyone notice any errors or omissions in that set of minutes? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. And I think I'm looking for one thank you. And that motion carries. Councillor Wong, is there anything that you wanted to cover from those set of minutes? You didn't have any motions coming out, so. No, I'm just going to highlight three items. Uh, we discussed the future of the downtown couplet, but referred the matter uh, back to administration regarding legal and financial implications with respect to the proposed cancellation. Uh, we also discussed uh, gaps in the downtown and citywide pedestrian network. Uh, there's several sidewalks that tend to uh, not be continuous in the city and we're, we wanted uh, administration to report back at a future committee meeting on those and how we would deal with them. And finally, we received a short uh, update on the snow removal program, and we're, we're expecting a more comprehensive report in the future. Thank you. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Wong. Any questions for Councillor Wong on any, any of those items or any other off the Public Works agenda? Seeing none, we'll move on to our next meeting. I believe that was General Government Services and Councillor Rice. Uh, I would move that Council receive the minutes of the General Government Services Committee meeting held April 6, 2011. Thank you very much. Are there any uh, notice of any errors or omissions in those minutes? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. And one more. Thank you. 
And that motion carries. Please carry on, Councillor Rice. I would move that $20,000 be allocated from the 2010 budget surplus for the purposes of retaining a consultant to prepare a cultural capitals application in celebration of the city's 100th anniversary in 2014. And number two, approve that the commitment for additional funding for the city's 100th anniversary celebration be referred to the city's 2012-2014 budget planning process. And further, number three, direct administration to apply for a cultural capitals designation for the year 2014. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Um, any discussion or debate, comments on the motion? I see Councillor Radburn in the queue. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. Yeah, I just uh, urge Council to support this motion. I think it does a number of things. One, it puts some resources together to uh, uh, work on a bid. We've given the direction to bid, so we certainly want to bid. Uh, but it also um, delays our decision with, with respect to other resources to this project. Uh, at budget time, when we have the, uh, all the needs, so to speak, uh, on the table, uh, and uh, hopefully the committee will have a, a tentative or some idea of budget and needed resources. So it makes, makes a lot of sense, this motion. Thank you. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Radburn. Any more discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Councillor Rice, was there anything else from that set of minutes? Nope, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Oh, thank you. Uh, any questions for Councillor Rice? Seeing none, we'll move on to the Environment Committee and Councillor Monroe, I believe that was you. There you are. Sorry. Thanks very much, Mayor Given. I'd move that Council receive the minutes of the Environment Committee meeting held April 11th, 2011. Thanks very much. Again, any errors or omissions from that set of minutes? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you, and that motion carries. Councillor Monroe. Uh, I would move that, uh, thanks Mayor Given, I move that uh, Council direct the Mayor write a letter reconfirming city support to nominate the Kakwa River as a can candidate for the Canadian Heritage River designation. Thanks very much, uh, Councillor Monroe. I see Councillor McLean in the queue. Councillor McLean. Uh, thank you, Mayor Given. I'll move as I did in the committee meeting, there's a conflict of interest. Okay, so Councillor McLean declares a conflict of interest and we'll leave the room. Uh, so now we'll open it up for discussion or debate on the motion. And I see Councillor Rice in the queue. Yes. Um, can you give me a couple of questions, actually? Um, what kind of responsibilities come with being a Canadian Heritage River? I know when we designate a building, a heritage building, we don't do it lightly because replacement of windows has to be of the original uh, uh, material and uh, as I say, it's quite onus to be a heritage building. So what kind of responsibilities come with um, a heritage river? And why do we have to reconfirm our support? Sure. Council Monroe, did you want to speak to that to start? Um, thanks, Mayor Given. I can certainly uh, give it a shot here, Councillor Rice. Um, as I understand it, um, the, the first, this is for the first phase of having the river nominated as a heritage river site. Uh, the work involved is on a volunteer basis uh, at this point to begin with until it is, uh, uh, actually I think it's ongoing as a, as a, as a volunteer basis uh, to, to perform the work as far as uh, providing reports uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, the volunteer base would be the ones that meet with the interested stakeholders around the river and come up with uh, an action plan or a management plan on how to manage the heritage uh, sites. Okay. I wonder if uh, maybe um, our Director of Intergovernmental Services from the committee meeting would like to give us any further information. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. As I understand it, the uh, committee putting forward this recommendation um, would be um, looking for support to develop a management strategy and I believe that the uh, responsibilities lie at the federal and provincial level in encouraging work uh, with stakeholders and local governments around development of the management strategy and it's really a conservation um, 
and, and supporting of the, the Kakwa River uh, for thank that. You. Okay, thanks very much. Councillor Rice, I see Councillor Wong in the queue. Yes, thank you very much, Mayor Given. I'm going to ask that uh, other council members support this uh, motion. This, this is uh, something that came to us uh, almost a couple of years ago to, uh, to write a letter um, confirming our, um, our support for the Kakwa River as a Canadian Heritage River designation. And the group that came then, um, they actually talked about the historical significance of the Kakwa River. Uh, but they also talked about um, wanting to pre help preserve uh, recreational rights there. Um, one of the concerns that people had is that perhaps it would uh, limit industrial development. So what I did was I just pulled up the uh, website for the Canadian Heritage River Systems. And what it says there specifically is the primary goal is managing, in managing a Canadian Heritage River is to protect the heritage features for which it is included in the system. This means that timber harvesting, mining, and other industrial activities can continue so long as they do not affect these heritage features. Potentially damaging developments within the management area may be restricted by local or other government authorities, while sustainable and complementary developments, such as certain recreational facilities, may be encouraged. So I, I think it still offers that balance of being able to develop it for industry while allowing it to further develop for recreational use so that everyone in Alberta gets a chance to enjoy the, the rich um, natural beauty of the area. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Wong. Councillor Gustafson. Thank you, Mayor Given. Um, so, uh, is it it's the whole river right from the lake to the Little Smoky, or is it just certain like the falls or I believe? Is it Councillor Monroe, can you speak to that? Yes, I thanks, Mayor Given. Yes, I believe it is the entire river from the lake to um, to to the Smoky. Anyone else uh, have any questions, comments, discussion, or debate? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. If we could call Councillor McLean back into the room. And <laughs> Councillor Monroe, did you have anything further from that set of uh, Environment Committee minutes? Yes, thank you very much, Mayor Given. Uh, just a couple of highlights. Uh, um, Earth Day is uh, April 22nd, this uh, Good Friday. Uh, we discussed it uh, a little bit there where we're just going to try and encourage everyone to be a little bit more green uh, if, we, if we possibly can. As well, um, May 6th to the 13th, City Scrub will be taking place and uh, it's a great opportunity for residents to participate in helping to uh, clean up the city a little bit. There will be bins placed around at strategic uh, uh, strategic places in the city so people have the opportunity to get rid of some of their un unwanted items. Yeah, thanks Thank you. very much, Councillor Monroe. Uh, were there any questions for Councillor Monroe? Seeing none, then we'll move on to the Protective Services Committee meeting, and I believe that was Councillor Radburn. Thank you, Councillor Radburn. You got it. Um, I would move the Council receive the minutes of the Protective Services Committee meeting held April 12, 2011. Thanks very much. Did anyone notice any errors or omissions in that set of minutes? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. And I think I'm waiting. Thank you. That motion carries. Council Radburn. Thank you, Mayor Given. I move Council approve the creation of a Joint Regional Emergency Management Committee as part of the Grand Prairie Regional Emergency Partnership and further recommend the mayor appoint a council representative to the committee. Background to this motion, um, we have uh, along with the county, Sexsmith, Beaver Lodge, Wembley and Hythe, uh, developed a Grand Prairie Regional Emergency Partnership. This motion, um, I guess, replaces the need for each municipality to maintain their own emergency management committee. And the role of this committee would be to advise on the development of emergency plans and programs and this would allow for some direct involvement uh, of council representatives. She would be the, the admin support, yes. Okay, thanks very much, Council Radburn. Uh, and just for uh, council members, if the motion carries, then I'll bring forward a recommendation for the council member to the next council meeting. Okay. Any discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. 
Councillor Reverend. Thank you, Mayor Given. Uh, I would move council approve new agreements between the city and Northern Sunrise County and the village of Napa to provide emergency call answer and fire dispatch services for a five year period in accordance with the fee schedule attached as Appendix A and Appendix B. Um, so this uh, is uh, a typical, I guess, um, agreement we have for a number of municipalities with respect to providing uh, th this emergency call and fire dispatch service. Um, the uh, previously, I think these municipalities were dealing or working with uh, Peace River. They've chosen to um, limit their um, their operation to more to be, uh, I guess, uh, ambulance and emergency. Um, and so um, we were very pleased that uh, that um, we were able to offer the service. They approached uh, ourselves, and uh, and because we have uh, the capacity and we have a track record of excellent service. We were kind of the uh, uh, the service provider of choice, so uh, it reflects well. Uh, this is about a um, I think for Northern Sunrise County seventy five hundred and seventy dollars a year, and for Napa two thousand nine hundred and twelve dollars a year. It's based upon the number of fire stations and the number of people in those municipalities, uh, and then there's a, a four percent increase uh, annual inflation increase per year over those five years. Thanks very much, Councillor Radburn. Any discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Councillor Radburn, you had a, something similar. Yes, uh, ditto uh, in terms of uh, the context, but I'll just move the council approve a new agreement between the city and the town of Fairview and the MD of Fairview to provide emergency call, answer, and fire dispatch services for a five year period in, in accordance with the fee schedule attached as Appendix A. Thanks very much, Councilor Reverend. Any discussion or debate this, on the motions? Yes. Sorry, this one is a uh, $10,339, so it's a little bigger municipalities. Okay, thanks very much. Uh, discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Uh, Councilor Reverend, was there anything else from the set of minutes? Yeah, just uh, very quickly, um, two or three other items. Uh, we did. Uh, um, at our meeting, we talked about idle reduction awareness, et cetera, and we've chosen as a committee to continue with our awareness and education program, kind of the three first steps of the four-step strategy, and, uh, it's, and gain some experience and gain some uh, engagement and support of the public before we uh, again look at a possibility of a bylaw in a year. Uh, in terms of uh, city staff uh, parking uh, at our facilities, we've asked administration to bring back some uh, uh, more information relative to uh, uh, fees for various types of parking spots and power or not power. And um, we've uh, chosen to, uh, to to not sign the agreement with Service uh, Alberta for their increase in fees pending um, advocacy efforts both from the AUMA and ourselves. Uh, I believe that uh, Mayor Gibbon will be presenting this uh, as he goes with the chamber uh, to Edmonton here at the end of the month. So we're, uh, we've asked for some information for our next meeting, but uh, for now we've chosen to see if we can uh, uh, cause government to reflect on this decision. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Radburn. Um, we'll move on to the Community Development Committee meeting and Councillor Gustafson, I believe that was you. Thank you, Mary Given. I'll move that Council receive the minutes of the Community Development me Meeting held on April 12, 2011. Okay. Thank you very much. Any errors or omissions in that set of minutes? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Councillor Gustafson, was there anything from that set of minutes that you wanted to cover? Uh, yes, Mayor Given. Uh, we had some delegations uh, at the meeting. Uh, suicide prevention was there, spoke about uh, reducing suicide. Uh, they spoke very highly of their men's support group, a very successful program, and the uh, Breakfast Club that uh, helps 9- to 17-year-olds uh, fight the battle against suicide. And uh, Odyssey House was there. Uh, they spoke again about uh, how, or how males are, are starting to be a, a tenant in the, in, the, in the building on occasion. And they have 60 volunteers to, uh, to help look after the uh, Odyssey House. That was news to me. And, it's uh, another, another sign that our community is uh, a great place to be and we look after our own. Uh, community Village was there, uh, 
presenting on a little bit of financial stress they're having and uh, the fact that they're strengthening their board and their organization and thriving to improve the, uh, the safety around the community village. Uh, the Grand Prairie Museum Society board was there to uh, show support for our newly passed uh, cultural master plan and a um, small presentation of, uh, about the city and the Evergreen Park partnership to uh, create more revenue in the two buildings in the city. And that's all. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Gustafson. Uh, any questions for Councillor Gustafson on that set of minutes? Seeing none, then uh, we would be through all of our committee business and into correspondence, of which there is none. And then next into delegation business, our first delegation was from our uh, CUPE local. And uh, I see Councillor Rice in the queue. Yes, I would move that Council decla declares April 28th the National Day of Mourning in Grand Prairie that we fly the flags at half-mast in all city buildings, that we encourage our employees to observe one minute of silence, that we do a flag raising at 1045 on that day, and that we allow CUPE to distribute black ribbons to all employees to be worn in, obs in observance of this day. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Any discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you, and that motion carries unanimously. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. And then our second uh, bit of delegation business was the uh, uh, Ms. Cardino that showed up to speak about the crosswalk, and I see Councillor Wong in the queue. Thank you, Mayor Given. I move that we refer the matter of the crosswalk on 110th Avenue between 102nd and 104th Street to the appropriate standing committee. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Wong. Uh, any discussion or debate on the motion? Or street. I see, I see Councillor Rice in the queue. Uh, just uh, recently in Edmonton, they tried a trial in one neighborhood where they drastically reduced the speed limit. I wonder. If, if we could make the uh, administration aware of that and that could form the result. The, uh, the pilot project has just ended, I think, last week, so we might get some valuable information from them. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Councillor Croker? Thanks, Mayor Given. Uh, I've also noticed that Edmonton, they do have, uh, they're not really portable, but they're movable speed bumps, and they could be placed, you know, 15 meters back or whatever. As a further reminder that there's a crosswalk coming up. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Crokin. Any further discussion or debate on the motion? Councillor McLean. Thank you, Mary. The only question I have, $250,000. And the one side, well, both sidewalks I was referring to on 108th, and this one's 110th. There's lights there already. To dig a trench and put a light there and put a light up. Uh, 250000 I find that just enormous. And why? I don't see that at all. There's okay. just something to be done there. Okay, so the motion that we have is to refer it to the committee yeah. where we could have all of these kind of discussions. And just remind, so what we're discussing and debating right now is whether we should refer it to committee or not. And so if anybody has a, a view on that, yeah, I, sure. uh, I see Councillor O'Toole in the queue. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to support this motion. Uh, there is a lot of traffic on that road. There is uh, uh, two high schools just shortly on 103rd Avenue there. 104th Avenue. Uh, that is a very long block, and these sidewalks are located in the center of that block. So, as traffic leaves the schools, they do generate some pretty high speeds, and I've witnessed it myself. And not all the cars that they drive are small, some of them are jacked up. So, I'm in full support of this motion. Okay, thanks very much. Any further discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Um, so that, I believe, deals with our delegation business. We have no notices of motion uh, tonight. We do have a couple of council member reports. And I believe, Councillor Rice, you had Aquaterra. Uh, yes, it's, uh, I'm, I'm really pleased to advise that Aquaterra will be buying a densifier uh, for styrofoam. Um, if you were to take this part of the room here, <coughs> totally fill it with styrofoam, the new densifier will be able to shrink that down to about the size of a brick. 
a huge advantage primarily uh, for the retail community who gets lots and lots of styrofoam every day. So um, again, this is this will be a giant step forward. Uh, plus the fact that there is a market for uh, the material after it shrunk down. Uh, so a, a totally good news story. Good. Thanks very much for that update, Councillor Rice. Um, I believe that there was next uh, Councillor McLean in the Downtown Association. Uh, thank you, Mayor Kevin. Uh, thank you, Luncheon, to celebrate Administrative Professional Week. It will be held April 29th at Duke's, beginning at 11.30 a.m. There's lots of door prizes, great lunch, and terrific entertainment. Tickets are $30 each and available at Cowley, Downtown Association, 780-538-1909. Preparations are underway for this as well for the sizzling summer sidewalk sale, June 18th. And the one I'm really looking forward to, the Street Performers Festival, July 22nd to the 24th. The associate, okay, no, I think that's, oh, there's a little bit more here, I think. Oh, okay, the association met with Mr. Manz Aquaterra and Mr. Hinton of City of Grand Prairie Engineering Services to begin with the process of developing a long-range plan for downtown infrastructure replacement plan as part of the sewer system was installed in the 30s. I believe that's been around longer than I am, so, okay. That's it. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor McLean. And uh, Councillor Radburn, I believe you had a piece library system. There you go, one more. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. Uh, Peace Library System, just to uh, highlights from our executive uh, committee meeting, uh, April 16th, this past Saturday in Hythe. Um, we did some policy revisions in terms of reserves, purchasing, and school services. Uh, we did uh, change our mission statement and belief statement. Um, uh, the, the new uh, mission statement for Peace Library System is Peace Library System, connecting libraries, people, and resources through teamwork, technology, and training. Uh, we did review courier delivery, uh, did a review and analysis of courier delivery, uh, looking at budgets, try to be as efficient as we can. So that's uh, forthcoming. And we did review a letter uh, that will be sent to municipalities in the, f in the spring uh, regarding increasing municipal fees a uh, dollar over a three-year period um, from $4.50 per capita to $5.50. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that's uh, kind of a heads up. And, We'll have a chance to talk about that uh, in the spring. Thank you. Great. Thanks very much, Councillor Radburn. Uh, from there, I believe we're on to uh, Council Roundtable. And uh, Councillor O'Toole, your microphone's on. Why don't you start? Oh, OK. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, on April 7th, I attended the Lions Learning Center annual general meeting. Uh, I met uh, some of the executive on board. Uh, great things, great programs are being held. At, and uh, that was a, it was a great, uh, great meeting. On April 8th, I uh, attended a tender opening here at the City Hall. On April 13th, I met with Council from Wembley, as well as the other council, our Council. Uh, on April 14th, we met with the MD Greenview Council, so our City Council met there. On April 15th, uh, our City Council met with the Chamber of Commerce Board, and we discussed a number of items to be brought up in the near future. I also attended the Chamber Morning Mixer at Subway, uh, that company has got 18 stores. They've been open up 10 years. Um, April 16th, I attended the 13th annual Swan Festival, and uh, I also attended the uh, curling at the Crystal Center. And I want to uh, commend the staff, the crew. Uh, we looked very nice and elegant, and the, the building looked awesome on TV. So hats off. I was there today. There's still a little bit of the reminiscence of the uh, the the beer hall. On the 18th, uh, the, briar patch. the briar patch, yes. Oh. And uh, I attended today the uh, Grand Prairie and District in Canada Music Festival. My granddaughter was there. Uh, not it was held. This portion was held at the St. Paul's United Church, and I want to uh, thank the people involved for donating their time. There's lots of volunteers there. Uh, not only the volunteers putting on the program, but the teachers and the educators that are uh, helping the students create such fine uh, works of art. 
this program was also sponsored by the Grand Prairie Rotary Club. So hats off to them as well. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Councillor Tool Boy. If I was a, a swan at a swan festival and I heard you were coming, I'd be concerned. Oh, well, they brought Knowing one in. It wasn't even plucked it, I thought. <laughs> 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 Councillor McLean. Thank you, Mary Given. Um, April 6th, I attended a council strategic planning session. On April 8th, I had a one on one with the city manager, Greg. Um, on April 13th, <laughs> he won. <laughs> April 13th, quite a few council met with uh, the council of Wembley. And uh, the, the town of Wembley's got a lot of great things happening for it. And I'm hoping it all comes to play for them. They deserve it. Uh, April 15th, we had a meeting with the Chamber of, of Commerce at the uh, casino. And on April 15th, we also had a council planning sit down with Slogan and Logan. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. On uh, Tuesday, April 5th, I attended, or I was at City Hall for the uh, Daffodil, Daffodil Day proclamation signing for the Canadian Cancer Society. Uh, later that day, I went to the Grand Prairie Regional College as a guest lecturer on behalf of the Grand Prairie Regional Tourism Association. That was my second visit uh, to their classes, and I was there specifically to deliver a, a tourism questionnaire, and uh, I'll have those results compiled for the association shortly. On Wednesday, April 6th, uh, I attended the Council Strategic Plan follow-up, uh, also went to the uh, spring tea at the college, which was hosted by the tourism and hospitality students, and they were recognizing the uh, the, the businesses that allowed them to uh, do some work experience for their practicums. On Friday, April 8th, I attended the Volunteer Appreciation Luncheon and Leaders of Tomorrow Awards, and I just want to congratulate all the winners of those awards. There are some great young kids there that are very inspirational. Um, I also met with the uh, city manager on later that Friday. He was going through his meeting with different council members. So if you haven't got your meeting booked with him yet, you better, you better get that done. Uh, Wednesday, April 13th, the Wapiti Corridor Planning Society had a working session meeting just to review the draft plan. And they are looking at booking some time with the city to present the plan and, and get some feedback. And they'll do that as soon as they meet with uh, SRD. Uh, obviously, Sustainable Resource Development is a key player in this. And they have to ha be able to uh, get, or they have to give the first round of feedback before the plan is ready to be shown to anyone else. Uh, I also attended the information exchange with Wembley Town Council. Uh, Thursday, April 14th, I attended the uh, information exchange with the MDA Greenville, Greenview Council. Uh, and then Friday as well, there was a, an information exchange session with the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, also later that Friday, I opened a tender for the reservoir feasibility study and attended the council strategic planning session. Uh, Saturday, April 16th, I attended the Art for Humanity event at Muskocipi Park, and I'd have to say that was the first uh, time that event's been put on. It was a really neat event where the students put together some works of art uh, from, uh, from stuff they got from the, the GP Restore, so it was recycled uh, parts, construction parts. They, they had some really neat stuff. Uh, Councillor Rice was there. She was the auctioneer. She did an excellent job, raised some money for, the, for, for a Habitat for Humanity. But uh, I have to say, she is just hilarious. And uh, it's hard not to throw a bid in, because you, you're waiting just to see what kind of comment she would make. <laughs> uh, finally, Monday, April 18th, uh, Multiplex Regional Resource Committee had a meeting. There really wasn't much to report except for the fact that um, we're looking at uh, offering some prizes for the big picture submissions now. Um, we're going to set up, um, we're hopefully looking at setting up multiple prizes throughout the campaign just to create some kind of deadlines um, for people to submit some pictures. I'm sure people, everyone's interested in putting in a picture. It's just, you know, we'd, we'd like to see more pictures in. Uh, than fewer so that we can have a good variety for those mosaic murals. Uh, I was also at City Hall for a tour of intergovernmental services on the third floor. Uh, they were celebrating their first year anniversary as an official city department. Uh, also, since it was a cake there, I noticed they were also celebrating uh, Jody Clausen's birthday, who works in that department. And um, just as a final note, I, was, I happened to talk to a couple of the website, website designers 
uh, for the city, and they're they're working on the current website, not the not necessarily the new design of the website. But I went to visit our city website today, and boy, does it ever look different! It looks fantastic. They've they've done some fantastic updates, and I would would uh, suggest that everyone get out there and just see what we have uh, spotlighted on www.cityofgp.com. Thanks very much, Councillor Wong. Councillor Rice. I would be remiss if I didn't follow up on that. One of my great frustrations about uh, our website has always been I never knew where to find bylaws. And after several frustrated minutes, we would end up calling uh, Miss Cherney to say, where do I find bylaws? And she would say, well, you go under government services or something. It was a quite a convoluted process. And the other day I needed to look up a bylaw and thought, well, I'm glad I've got lots of time. And I turned it and it was like, whoa, it's right there. It was just as slick as anything. So I know that's one that they certainly received at least one complaint about. But uh, it's there and it's fabulous. It's really a easy website now to navigate for even for a techno peasant like me. I uh, want to command, I think it was probably transportation services as well as the staff at the Canada Games Arena. I was out recently and someone made the comment that was agreed to by many that said, did you watch the curling? Did you see Grand Prairie on TV? Did we ever look good? It looked like a place you'd say, whoa, would I ever like to visit or to live there? So um, I think our, our staff really shined us up nicely. So thank you. Um, I went to the Pioneer Museum Society's 50th anniversary commemorative luncheon, um, and uh, they will be changing the name and uh, um, omit, uh, leaving out the p name Pioneer, so it'll be the Museum Society of Grand Prairie and Area. Uh, and uh, they have a new, um, um, they have a new uh, display down there. Uh, it's really worth taking a look at, and there's a, the white moose. I'm sure you're all familiar with the white moose. Well, there's a, an animated little white moose that walks you through this uh, 50th anniversary display and all the things, uh, and what the staff has done is culled some of the more um, unusual artifacts that they've received over the last 50 years. And as uh, Councillor Wong said, we attended the Art for Humanity's Sake. Um, what a neat promotion and certainly a lot of unusual stuff. So commend them on that first fundraiser. And that's all I have. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Councillor Monroe. Thank you, Mayor Given. Um, April 5th, I also uh, attended the uh, Daffodil Day uh, proclamation here at the city in support of the Cancer Society. Uh, April 6th, I had a meeting with the Center of Research and Innovation. Our advisory committee met. Um, this is the first advisory committee meeting that I've had the, or that they've had since I've uh, come into office. And there was a few other new people there, so it was good to meet uh, the team that we'll be working with. And uh, there's a lot of interesting things uh, that will be coming out of the uh, Center for Research and Innovation. Um, <clears throat> The following day as well, uh, had a uh, meeting with uh, Bruce Rutley and Susan Bansgrove and the mayor. Uh, um, Susan and uh, Bruce are uh, with the Center of Research and Innovation and they were uh, once again just kind of recapping some of our direction uh, that the college is taking on, on, uh, on the program. Uh, later that day, I also had the opportunity to uh, join uh, 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 Ainsworth, or more specifically, it was uh, uh, Dave Cook, who is the uh, general manager of the Woodwinds operations with Ainsworth. We went to the Premier's dinner in Edmonton, uh, probably the last Premier's dinner that uh, Premier Ed Stelmack will be uh, presenting at. Uh, he gave a great presentation, and uh, it was uh, um, quite heartfelt at one point. He got uh, pretty emotional about uh, the the service uh, that the troops are doing uh, overseas and and whatnot. Uh, had the opportunity while we were there to uh, talk briefly with uh, Doug Horner, who is candidate for uh, the premier's position. Also, uh, I sat at dinner with uh, uh, Chris Eagle, who uh, many of you will know as our new uh, CEO of Alberta Health Services. So it was uh, quite an interesting chat with him. And of course, uh, 
ran into uh, uh, our uh, GP Wapiti MLA Wayne Drysdale at the at the dinner, so that was good. Uh, April eighth, I. Uh, had the privilege of uh, bringing greetings and uh, reading the Mayor's Proclamation to the Volunteer Service Services Bureau Appreciation Lunch and Awards Gala. Uh, and that was, and that's in regards to National Volunteer Week. Um, I think there was four or 500 people at the Crystal Centre for this event. Uh, I thought I was going to a crowd where it'd be, you know, 30 or 40 people. And, and of course, the Mayor's administration didn't tell me that there was going to be 500 people there that I had to present to. Uh, <laughs> But anyways, it, it was uh, it was a good time, a great meal. Uh, Roy Bickle also got up and uh, did a little presentation. Uh, he is, of course, uh, uh, the Volunteer of the Year, uh, recognized through the through the bureau, and it was nice to hear him speak. Uh, met with Wembley Town Council on the 13th and the Chamber of Commerce on the 15th, and then on the 16th, I had the once again the opportunity to bring greetings to. Um, and, and read the Mayor's Proclamation for Earth Day uh, events and celebrations at, uh, at Muscacipi Park. Uh, decent turnout down there. There was uh, uh, a number of small kiosks set up uh, in regards to, um, uh, for example, ACO had some energy saving programs. LSM was there talking about heating efficiency. Uh, nice scavenger hunt at, uh, put, put on by Starbucks. Um, I didn't stay for that, I should have, because I, I really like Starbucks, but, um, and uh, a whole bunch of activities take, took place there. Uh, and then later that uh, day, by the way, this list goes on and on. <laughs> later that day, um, we went to the Prairie Art Gallery for the annual, eighth annual art auction. Uh, once again, a, a fantastic event. Uh, hats off to uh, Ken Truen, who was the MC of the event, and of course, Robert Stephen and, uh, and the board of directors uh, that, that uh, put on an absolutely stellar event for the art gallery. It's their major fundraiser of the year, and thought it was a fantastic time. And then finally, yesterday, uh, I attended the Vasiki celebration at the Sikh temple. And uh, it was my first time being to the Sikh temple. I took my wife and children and uh, um, it was uh, it was quite mesmerizing. They, uh, uh, they had some artists, uh, Sikh artists from Calgary come up and do some musical performances. Uh, and it was, it was just fantastic listening to them. Um, of course, I didn't understand anything they said because it was in Punjabi, but regardless, it was a nice event. And then, of course, it was followed up with, uh, with a meal service afterwards. And I, uh, I felt really welcome, and I think that uh, uh, we've got a, a, a great Sikh base here in Grand Prairie, and they, they do a fantastic job. So that was it. Thank you. Great. Thanks very much, Councillor Monroe and Councillor Crokin. He took up quite a bit of time. But anyway, it was pretty good stuff. Now, Helen, if you have a little trouble trying to find bylaw, maybe just pull through a stop sign. You'll find one real quick. Um, on April the 6th, I uh, attended the council strategic plan meeting also. On the 12th, I attended the uh, first game of the, great, uh, of the Grey Power Players Curling Championship. And then later, I uh, stayed for the grand uh, opening with the Grand Prairie uh, drum uh, band with the uh, mayor giving uh, greetings on behalf of council. And I'd like to congratulate the uh, players that were here, even from Sweden, to uh, please come back and visit our city, resourceful, limitless. Um, <laughs> they saw what a great facility we have, and uh, I'm sure they will visit us again. Uh, a special congratulations to Janae Dijon. Uh, she is from a junior curler from Sexsmith Curling Club. I might add that they do live in the city of Grand Prairie. They just choose to uh, curl out of Sexsmith. She won uh, $1,000 plus $10,000 for the Sexsmith Curling Club by being closest to the button. I think it was six and a half inches. Great job. Uh, keep it up. I met her uh, mom today. And I said, I think she's just out curling you. <laughs> so someday we may see her at the Pursuit of Excellence, uh, getting some funds to further her career. Again, on the 13th, I met with the we, with Council and the Wembley Council, 14th with the MD of Greenview, uh, 
And they, uh, they shared with us they have a lot of similar concerns about funding uh, MSI and that, and uh, I can't go into it because Councillor Monroe took up too much time. Uh, on the 15th, I also attended the lunch with the Chamber, and uh, it's really great to see the Chamber going down to the City of Edmonton with our Council and other regional councils to share regional concerns, and it's not pointing fingers, it's just concerns for our area where so many good resources come from and good councils. Uh, and then later on that day, the three-year, uh, we worked again on the finalizing the three-year plan. On the 16th, that was a, a great day too. Uh, I've, I started off with Helen at the 50-year celebration lunch at the museum. Congratulations to, uh, to Colin and his crew. They did a, a great thing. And one thing was pointed out to us in that special room that Helen had uh, alluded to. They had the very first minutes of the museum's uh, meetings, and I noticed Helen had made one of the first motions on there. <laughs> <laughs> So <laughs> uh, later at uh, 4 o'clock, I, uh, I was at Wayne Drysdale's barbecue at Dimsdale and met a number of uh, excited uh, landowners that just can't wait to be uh, annexed in to receive all of the services of the great city of Grand Prairie. Re it resources limitless. At 7 o'clock, I also uh, attended the annual art auction at the uh, Holiday Inn. It was a great job by Robert and all the volunteers. And I just talked to Robert today, and, and it is one of their biggest fundraisers. And they raised $52,000, but there might be a few more dollars coming in. So terrific fundraiser and great job. And that's everything. Thanks, thanks very much, Councillor Crokin. Uh, Councillor Rice, we'll have you come at the end. Councillor Gustafson. Thank you, Mayor Given. I attended the uh, Daffodil Day proclamation signing here for uh, cancer awareness. I also attended the, aside from all my other regular scheduled meetings, I attended the uh, Chamber of Commerce uh, luncheon in Grand Prairie here. I also attended a fundraiser for uh, Grand Prairie Minor Baseball. Uh, a couple of things that I've learned in the last couple of weeks is that we have 33 departments here in the city of Grand Prairie. So that's, that's good that we have all these departments. And another thing that... <laughs> um, I also learned if anybody's going to be traveling with, you know, mostly children, but even your friends, that, you know, it's a very good idea to take your little cell phone out and take a picture of your children or your friend in case you lose them. Everybody knows how fast email goes and travels, and it's just a very good tip for anybody traveling around with children or friends that might disappear. And I'm wondering if we could, uh, we're getting lots of questions about the multiplex opening up here soon, so I wonder if uh, in the near future somebody could tell me exactly when the multiplex is going to open up so yeah. that, so that, that I can, two weeks. So you that I can jump in. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Gustafson. Councillor Radburn? <laughs> Thank you, Mayor Given. So, Alex, I've been telling you, late November, uh, is when we get the keys and hopefully early January, that's the latest information. Uh, but uh, you'll be pleased to know that the uh, staff are coming uh, to do an update with respect to the multiplex in uh, within a month. So you'll get uh, that year update that you're asking for. Um, Daffodil Day Proclamation uh, as well. Um, council planning session. Grand Spirit Foundation Board and Hythe Pioneer Home uh, Board had discussions with respect to how we can uh, and our work together. Uh, I also attend the Players Curling Championship opening ceremonies and a number of the draws. I do want to thank uh, Jane and her staff, uh, Tina McDonald, the chair of the organizing committee and the 120 volunteers to put on the event, and all the fans and spectators uh, who attended to make it such a success. Um, April 13th, Transportation Department end of season barbecue. I think that was just when it was snowing, but uh, Anyway, we're, we're getting there. Um, Romney Town Council, MD Greenville Council, Chamber of Commerce uh, information sessions, um, Council strategic plan. Uh, on the 16th, uh, I was in height, but came back and took in Earth Day, Muscosipi Park. And I want to thank uh, Lucy and Michelle, uh, I guess for Matt, for, uh, for our, our booth, so to speak, 
but particularly Lucy. Lucy helped me sign up for the Green Grouch program, helping improve the environment program. So every week I get the list of things that I can check off and uh, we're still ahead of Red Deer. Not that uh, we're competitive at all, but we're ahead of Red Deer. Uh, and finally, Mayor, with your indulgence, um, uh, Mayor Given and Council, um, this is um, Organ and Tissue Donation Week. Uh, and uh, uh, I would like just to, uh, to remind everybody about that and remind people of, uh, I guess, three things. Organ and tissue donation saves lives. I know that firsthand with my granddaughter. Uh, talk to your family about your wishes and sign your donor card or fill out your provincial donor registration form. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Councillor Radburn and Councillor O'Toole. We started with you, didn't yeah, we? You, if you All the way. To <laughs> Councillor Rice. <laughs> I just wanted, I'm sorry I forgot this, I just would ask that Council join with me in congratulating Councillor Wong, who was the winner of the Merv Krause Memorial Poker Tournament. So, <laughs> it's, it's very good. I mean, the money raised goes to a good cause. Congratulations, uh, Councillor Wong. Who was the lead organizer of that tournament? That would be myself. Okay. <laughs> oh, there we, go. We, we won't ask who brought the cards to the table, hey? Eh? <laughs> uh, thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Um, um, so on Tuesday the 5th, I was here at City Hall for the da Daffodil, Day, Daffodil Day Proclamation on behalf of the Canadian Cancer Society. And then Saturday, uh, from, sorry, excuse me, from the 8th to the 9th, of April, I was actually in Banff and attended on behalf of uh, the City of Grand Prairie as a presenter this time. Uh, I was there with Francois Fournier, who is the uh, general manager of the Arctic Winter Games, and we did a presentation on uh, sport hosting strategies. We were actually invited to come down by the organizers of the conference uh, because they heard about the uh, tremendous success that the Arctic Winter Games was, uh, as well as the past legacy of events that Grand Prairie has had. So it was a pleasure to be able to attend an event like that and share some, well, share brag about how we do things here in Grand Prairie a little bit um, but I think that uh, we had about 30 or 40 people registered for our presentation um, and it was uh, it was fun to share some of the insights that we gained through the events that we've hosted in the past in Grand Prairie um, I did have an opportunity while I was there to hear John Furlong the CEO of the uh, Vancouver Olympic Games speak he was their closing speaker and uh, absolutely fantastic speaker and uh, an inspirational message about how these types of competitive events can not only bring together communities but countries really is ultimately his message. Uh, he believes it was a transformational event for Canada um, and of course being the organizer of an event you always want to sell it as was the best thing ever but I really believe that everybody who experienced that all across the country uh, feels much the same way so uh, a good thing to keep in mind the power of sport. On Tuesday the 12th I went to Forbes School to chat with their team who will be traveling to Knoxville, Tennessee uh, to compete in the Destination Imagination uh, World Championships. Uh, might not have that, ch might not be a championships, but world competition. Um, they're a group of young people uh, who competed here at GPRC and uh, won the right to uh, represent Grand Prairie at this uh, world level event. And I was there to uh, make a contribution uh, to their effort. They have to raise about $19,000 to get the team down there and it's in the space of a month or so here. Uh, and so they were looking for some support. Uh, they had actually sent an email to inquire whether our pursuit of excellence might be for something like that. Uh, but unfortunately it's another one of those things, uh, Councillor Wong, we've identified there's a few that sort of fall outside of sport. Um, and so we weren't able to support them that way. But uh, thanks very much to the uh, city staff, the city manager. Uh, who managed to uh, find the right budget codes to cobble together some money so the City of Grand Prairie is able to make a uh, $1,200 donation to help them support uh, their travel. And uh, they're still looking for additional funds, of course, throughout the community. So hopefully our community will come together and support these young innovators. Um, on the, uh, later that evening, I attended at the Grand Prairie Regional College Festival of Gold, which was celebrating the uh, excellence in athletics at uh, GPRC. And it really has been a fantastic year at GPRC, especially in the women's programs, um, of which we all uh, have heard about their success over the last while. I just wanted to note, though, Andrea Carlin uh, from women's basketball was just recently named the CCAA Player of the Year. Uh, and this goes on her shelf with uh, her CCAA All-Canadian 
uh, Award as well as her ACAC Player of the Year Award. So basically she's run Player of the Year at the uh, Alberta level, was named to the All-Canadian team, and was the All-Canadian Player of the Year. So absolutely fantastic athletes that we have here in Grand Prairie. And she was just one of the athletes that was honored at that Festival of Gold. Um, from the Festival of Gold, I uh, zipped on over to the Crystal Centre for the opening of the GP Home and Auto Players Championships. It was a pleasure to be able to bring greetings on behalf of Council and thank all the volunteers who made that happen. And then from the 13th to the 15th, um, I attended at a visioning workshop for the new Health and, edu health and Education Centre. This was put on by the provincial government and their prime consultant, uh, Dialogue, who are heading up what is essentially, I mean, a lot of people recognize it as the new hospital. Um, and uh, it was good to see that health and education were front and center. Uh, there were a number of health care service providers in the room, uh, everybody from various areas of Alberta Health Services and different disciplines, as well as doctors, uh, nurses, and, uh, and then there were some civil folks like myself from the City of Grand Prairie, uh, some of our planners, and really getting everybody together in the room to start the discussion about uh, where we need to go with the facility. Uh, the message uh, was very clear that it is going to happen quite quickly um, because this has been the direction from the provincial government. Um, but I was encouraged to hear that they are going to build on the work that was done in 2005 and 2007 when the former Peace Country Health uh, system had been looking at a new hospital. So they aren't starting from scratch, which should allow them to move relatively quickly. Uh, certainly there are some site constraints um, that we'll have to work with our city planners on the, the technical considerations of making that work. Uh, but I really believe that all the right people are in the room and that the uh, prime consultant dialogue is committed to ensuring that the community has the information it needs about what's happening with that project. Uh, I was also really encouraged to know that they had a lot, number of local sub uh, consultants on there. There were uh, local architects um, and one that really uh, made me very hopeful was that their lead civil uh, consultant is actually ISL uh, who the City of Grand Prairie has a lot of experience dealing with locally so it's good to see and that should help things move along uh, smoothly and quickly. Um, on the 13th th that evening uh, I attended at the meeting with the Town of Wembley and then on the 14th in the evening the meeting with the MD of Greenview. The 15th, the meeting with the Chamber of Commerce was already mentioned. And then on the 16th, I was also in attendance at the 50th uh, anniversary celebration for the Grand Prairie, uh, the former Grand Prairie Pioneer Museum Society. Um, and then later that evening, I attended at the Prairie Art Gallery's art auction. Um, I think there's a few bills left to come in yet, but I believe they had a, a reasonably successful uh, event of the 31 years uh, that they've been hosting the event. They said that this was the fifth most success successful in terms of fundraising. So uh, certainly not at the top, but also not at the bottom, and uh, I think a, a great uh, event to support the art gallery. Um, one thing that I think needs to be mentioned from that, uh, certainly people appreciate being able to go and, and uh, support the art gallery and buy the artworks. Uh, often not remembered is that there are working artists who are donating those artworks. And uh, essentially, uh, all that money does go 100% to the Prairie Art Gallery. So there are artists who, over a number of years, have contributed upwards of $20,000 worth of works in support of the Prairie Art Gallery. And so I think uh, all of us there that, uh, you know, we're having a great time uh, enjoying that, and the folks that were uh, gracious enough to buy art uh, should also recognize that there are working artists out there, and uh, I think the community should remember them and, and support them when possible, too. Um, and then finally, this morning on the 18th, I was here at City Hall and had the opportunity to greet a class of grade 6 students from Hythe. Uh, and they were in town for the music festival that Councillor O'Toole mentioned, and, but it was also an opportunity to share a little bit about local government, uh, the importance of local government, and how they can get involved in their own community. And with that, uh, if there's nothing else, I think we'll call our council meeting adjourned. Thank you. Good job.